So good afternoon everybody. I am Shomobrato De and I will be presenting my ECCB work which is detection of independent moving object in non-planar scenes via multi-frame monocular equipolar constraint. And this is a joint work with uh, Vladimir Riley, Imran Salami and Dr. Mubarak Shah. So the problem is detection of the independent, of independent moving object and it's detected in a non-planar scene. So scene can have like large perspective variance and lots of out of plane object and the camera capturing the video is moving. So there are lots of previous works done in this area. The few works in class can be categorized as homography based and plane plus parallax method <coughs> where it is assumed there is a planar scene and they register each frame of the video with respect to the first but the, there are problem whenever this uh, assumption is violated and there are some recent work done <coughs> using rank constraint method where author showed that the static points can be represented as a low rank matrix where the moving point doesn't satisfy this condition so they can segment the static points from moving points. So this slide shows the problem with the image based registration based approach. So first window is showing the original video, second window showing the homography based aligned and you can see there is a large outer plane object which is appeared to be moving and it is detected as moving object in the uh, background subtraction based method. And so we try to use, solve this problem using fundamental matrix based approach and we hope that it solves the problem related to the perspective variance and this figure shows two camera one is camera left camera right observing a point x and <clears throat> the po projection of the point on the left camera image plane is xl and which can be mapped to the right camera image plane with a line erxr which is the epipolar line and <clears throat> each point in this epipolar line can satisfy the constant which is well known epipolar constraint equation. It is represented by this x or transpose f x l equal to 0 where f is the fundamental matrix with a 3 by 3 rank 2 matrix. And <coughs> we use this constraint to find out moving object. So here in this uh, figure we are showing one camera is moving in the space over the time and its initial location is c0 and its location at time t is ct and it it's observing a, a moving point x whose initial location is x0 and at time t it moved to some other location. So the projection of xt on the right image plane is not anymore on the epipolar line and <clears throat> that's actually violating the epipolar constraint. So if we put that x test t in this equation it will give a large error value and based on that error value we can segment out the moving points. But this uh, fundamental matrix based approach has some problem what I show, we showed in the paper like it has the detection is not robust based on uh, different noise level and different camera motion. Also we have to calculate fundamental matrix for the each frame we need to detect moving objects. So we move to a further idea which is multi-frame monocular fundamental matrix based approach to solve the same problem. So in this figure it's showing that one camera is moving over the space observing a point x and in each instant time the camera position changes so as the image of the point x and so it generates different fundamental matrix uh, for each two pair of uh, camera position and the goal is to find out if there is a relation between this dynamically evolving fundamental matrix or not. So we again started with the well-known equation of epipolar constraint and says when camera is moving over the space that fundamental matrix can be represented as a uh, function over the time and we represented this uh, function as a polynomial function over the time and <coughs> the degree of the polynomial depends on the camera motion. So how smooth the camera motion is, the less number of uh, degree the polynomial function can have. Here fi is the uh, 3 by 3 matrix and we use uh, 
k is equal to 3 which is the degree of the polynomial so we have 36 coefficients and the degree polynomial 3 uh, means it's incorporate the like, two degree of freedom in translation of motion which is capturing acceleration deceleration and one degree rotational freedom so overview of our method is given a sequence of frame we calculate frame by frame optical flow and we divide the frame into fixed length frame set and part, perform particle advection on each set which gives us the dense trajectory of the pixels and using those trajectories we can establish point correspondences in between any two frames within the frame set which gives us the observation matrix we use this observation matrix to find out the MMFM coefficients in the same way 8 polar uh, 8 point uh, algorithm does for fundamental matrix once we know the coefficients we can say like given one <coughs> correspondence of the statics points and given one corresponding of the moving point the error generated by statics point will be way lower than the error for the moving points the observation matrix is calculated like this suppose given a frame set like this we know the trajectories of each pixels here so we can establish correspondence from first frame to second frame first frame to third frame and so on and our frame set length is 15 frame so we have like 14 frame correspondences and for each frame correspondences we have choose three random uh, point correspondences which gives us uh, 42 point correspondences so our observation matrix size become uh, 42 by 36 which is the number of coefficient of the MMFM so for the computation of the MMFM we get this point correspondences and construct the observation matrix which uh, when the multiplication of observation matrix and this fundamental MMFM coefficient should ideally give zero and this observation matrix uh, one row is look like this the first two equations and F is the 36 coefficients arranged as a column vector and then we minimize the O multiplication by F uh, to get the MMFM coefficient and we do it in the ransack framework <coughs> as it is done in the 8 point algorithm so to detect a moving object given a trajectory i trajectory like this equation we establish the point correspondences in the trajectories like x dash i0 x dash i1 and so on and we compute the average error for the trajectory so it's showing in this equation so on is the one point correspondences and it gives some error multiplying by the MFM coefficients and we average out for all the correspondences found in this trajectory and this average error for moving point should be higher and we can segment out this moving point and uh, moving trajectories uh, to be belong to a moving uh, object so we perform some synthetic experiments uh, to find out uh, the efficiency of our algorithm so we started with some synthetic uh, static points and moving points in the 3d space and we project uh, these points in different camera locations and we use 1000 static points for our experiment and 100 moving points which is uh, and we use some kind of camera motion model to move the camera and we project uh, this moving and static points on the image planes and add some noise to make the experiment realistic and use the algorithm stated uh, just before to find out the moving objects in these image planes so the, here is the result of our experiments where the red curves are showing the detection for a fundamental matrix and blue curve is for MMFM and dotted line is for moving uh, points and continuous line is for the static points so the first two plots showing when the camera is accelerating and when camera is decelerating and we can see here like 
Using the MMFM model, we can easily segment the static points and moving points using one single threshold value, but we cannot do it for the fundamental matrix uh, static and moving points. And the second two plots showing to degeneracy case where <clears throat> the points are moving along the epipolar plane and second uh, plot is showing when camera is static. And the x-axis showing the, how long the degeneracy case valids. For example, for this four, it's showing like for the first four frames, the camera, uh, the points are moving along the epipolar plane and so on. So here also in these degeneracy cases, we, our uh, model performs good and it can segment the static and moving points easily. So here are the results, uh, comparison of different method and the fastest homography based approach which is having problem detecting that uh, out of plane object it's detecting and same for the rank constant method it's sometimes detecting the out of plane object. Fundamental matrix doesn't detect the out of plane object but it's uh, detection is fluctuating a lot because it cannot always segment the static points and moving points and here is our method which is almost perfectly detecting the moving points, not detecting the out of plane object. And here are some more results on some different videos. The first video is captured from a, a UAV and other three videos using handheld cameras. So here are the quantitative measures we use for our results, so first is FDA, which is frame detection accuracy. And the top part of the equation showing the overlap of the ground truth and detected blobs. And here is the G is the ground truth of the TF flame and is the ith object. And it's the lower part of the equation is the total area of ground truth and detected blobs. And SFDA is sequence frame detection accuracy which is the average over all the frames. The FFDR is the false frame detection rate which is the false detected area of all the false blobs over the uh, truly detected uh, blobs area. And SFFDR is the average over the all the frames. So here is the quantitative results of our experiments. The sequence 1 to 5 is captured by us and sequence, car sequence 3 to 9 is taken from GHU database 155. And the last column is showing uh, our methods uh, uh, detection rate and false detection rate. In all the cases, uh, the detection rate is quite high in our case and false detection, false detection rate is very low. Uh, so that's it. Thank you.